kind of clarifications. We're mainly talking about uh, renewable-based electricity here, not all renewables. We could talk about that, but today we're mainly talking about electricity. And when we say renewables trade, yes, at this moment um, we have trade um, in renewables um, sort of credits between consenting governments, but we're also looking towards the uh, more normal trade in renewables, electricity now and after 2020, just some more clarifications. Now, uh, I, I'm an energy fellow here in the Institute, but I used to work for the European Commission uh, in DG Energy, where my role was a pen. I was a pen on a lot of these very broad uh, review, strategic, the second strategic review, the 2050 roadmap. Um, so, my expertise is in seeing in a uh, rather a necessarily shallow way, the whole picture of what's actually going on. And this is what I want to talk about today. Um, a lot is going on within the European Commission and in the uh, European institutions, the, the member states. Um, so my, my question really to you for this discussion is, where are we now with all of these um, initiatives in the European debate? What issues are recognised? Um, how can we envisage uh, addressing them? And at the end, I think that it would be good to comment on you know, which sort of input now is going to be is likely to have the greatest leverage. Where are we likely to get the greatest bang for the buck? Um, is it in something um, political? Is it in something regional? Is it a focus on infrastructure? Is it a direct focus on markets? How are we actually going to um, get most um, traction in the European debates relating to renewables trade? Okay, so, and I'll be quite brief on this. So, um, at the moment you can, you can look at a whole range of um, debates and um, initiatives in Europe and you can see that renewables trade, the potential for it, how to um, encourage it, it's a dimension throughout these um, debates. Let, you can start, say, with the uh, internal energy market, the completion of the internal energy market by 2014, and all of the work on the framework guidelines and network codes. Um, I think that this would have to be seen as a fairly lively debate. Um, on the one hand, we're having a lot of uh, discussion now as to whether the energy-only market at the day-ahead stage can ever, in the conditions that we know, can ever um, make sense or uh, reimburse the uh, producer return on new um, high capital intensive low carbon investments. We're also getting um, debate on uh, elements in the target model um, which are not to do with the day ahead market. So we'll look at the discussion now on the uh, framework guideline and the network codes on balancing markets. Um, of big interest to the renewable sector. Uh, ditto the intraday um, market discussion is somewhat blocked, I understand. Um, so across the range of the um, markets in the target model, we have a pretty lively discussion and also one that's not limited to the, if you like, 2008 and 2009 conception of the target model. For example, on the balancing um, on the balancing mechanisms in the target model, it basically said let TSOs get together and um, and, and look at pilot projects. But now we're getting um, reasonably well formulated positions from stakeholders going further than that into um, you know the type of products that could be on a on a balancing market, access to them, and uh, and the. Um, moves to you know, truly make uh, cross-border um, trade possible there. So that's my first point, really. Uh, the framework, internal energy market completion, target model, framework guidelines, network code. Seems to me it's um, there. There are good. There's good potential there. Organized, um, an organized debate. How far can it go? Um, secondly, the infrastructure. Um, and particularly the infrastructure regulation, which is now in force. I think that um, the idea of pushing ahead with infrastructure rather than markets, it's well established in the history of uh, European energy policy. And now, um, with the Connecting Europe facility, we have actual real European money, which uh, ramps up this possibility 
uh, a little bit more. It is more possible to be for the European Union to argue for proaction on infrastructure and perhaps to go not so strongly um, on markets. Um, but this regulation, I think it would be very interesting to see the uh, work on the projects of European interest because there there had to, be, and, and sorry, and also on the cooperation between regulators because there had to be cost-benefit analysis. So you cannot stay in the pure realm of just infrastructure, not markets. You've got to be talking about um, the, the uh, impact of markets on the uh, infrastructure and investment. So again, a new area of the uh, European work, um, which I think will take us forward um, on renewables trade. Um, then looking at the communications, in, in June 2012 we had the renewables communication, uh, that's renew renewable energy a major player in the European energy market. Again, the focus on the market and that communication, you needn't review it, it was focusing on the, renew the integration of renewables into markets, any market, and the integration into, of markets into a European market, and it was also talking about infrastructure. That led very naturally into um, the November 2012 communication on the internal energy market. Um, and there again, it's the idea, the mindset is very pragmatic, making the internal energy work. Work for what? And among the purposes, um, there is the transition challenge, making energy, European, Europe's energy systems fit for the future. Now here we're right into um, the realm of renewables trade. And that communication, as you know, it um, raised a whole range of issues. And I think it's good to see that the Energy Council um, in, on the 7th of June, if you look to see the response which the Irish presidency, it has to be given credit, the response which the Irish presidency could choreograph out of the uh, Energy Council, it goes into reasonable depth on recognizing um, issues of market design, of the interplay between market um, and infrastructure, and also um, the interplay between market design and um, what the Commission is seeing as state intervention, the optimization of state interventions. Now there, let's have a little hold. You could see this as the Commission being um, rather sort of defensive and saying, the market will work, basta. Here's the state aid's big stick. You, you, you could see it like that. Um, I think that that would be a, a bit too um, dramatic. I think that the, uh, the communication, as has been picked up in the Energy Council um, response, uh, it raises genuine issues about the, um, the differences between the um, markets across the Union um, in, you know, at this stage genuine uh, issues about the um, insistence justified of member states in being sure that the lights will stay on in their countries, their insistence on this, um, if you like, public service. Um, so that is, it's not just seen as a matter of, you know, let's apply state aids or public service or the disciplines that go with the um, public service in the uh, European legislation. It is a discussion about um, how the um, member states' um, you know, um, rights to ensure their own energy security uh, can be accommodated. But it puts that discussion in the context of um, an, you know, an, an energy market which is seen um, to be evolving and to, uh, it will continue to, to evolve in the next while. We, we're expecting um, guidelines now uh, in, well, the inter-service consultation was due to be launched um, late in this month. Um, yeah, it was due to be launched, and I suppose it has. I'm not sure is anybody more up to date than I am. But we're expecting from um, this, uh, from, as a follow-up to these last two communications, guidelines on support of renewables on uh, renewables trade, in fact, use of cooperation mechanisms under the Renewables Directive, and uh, guidance also on capacity mechanisms. Now, guidelines, these are what the Commission can, um, can prepare 
when, um, you know, when it is a matter in which um, member states have quite a lot of, um, of space, it simply is the case that support is, um, if you like, the details of it are largely left to the member states. So the guidelines, you, I don't think anybody would be surprised by them. Um, we expect to see um, that they will all be very pragmatic things, operational pragmatic things, about the control of costs of support, and this would be looking at, for example, the um, you know, best practice on um, uh, costs of technologies, etc. Um, there will be, again, best practice on uh, market integration, and again, uh, not only integration into a market, but also doing it in a way which enables the integration into European markets. So I don't think there'll be any surprises um, there. I, I'm, I have to say, on this, I'm just going by um, what has been you know, said in various uh, conferences and all, as far as I can see, those guidelines haven't leaked yet. Um, I haven't seen anything at all about the guidelines on uh, renewables trade, or the cooperation mechanisms, and I'm sure there are people in this room who know an awful lot more about that than I do. On the uh, guidelines on the capacity mechanisms, we think that in the text, of the internal energy market communication, and particularly in the public consultation that went with it, um, they, those guidelines, um, we were given a very good indication. And in the end of the day, I think it comes back to um, the, sort of the, 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 um, the legislative constraints on um, state aids or public um, service actions in the European Union, you know, necessity, proportionate, appropriate, etc. So I don't think we'll have surprises there. But still, if I were to sum up on all of these, um, these communications, uh, it seems to me that um, they're, you know, they're, they're genuinely recognising um, that there is a challenge on uh, energy market design. They are recognising that certainly in the current situations there are justifications for um, you know, interventions and all of that uh, by member states, um, but they are trying to pragmatically uh, push forward um, towards um, some sort of adequate coherence uh, amongst uh, at EU level. Very finally, I would like to um, look at the draw your attention to the 2030 communication and also to the old uh, Energy Roadmap 2050, um, with which I was involved. Now we're just seeing, we'll be seeing the debate um, that has sparked off by the 2030 uh, communication, including particularly um, the question of uh, a renewables target, a target for anything else relevant to renewables or not. Personally, I hope that there'll be a focus on market and infrastructure rather than renewables per se. Um, but so we'll, we'll see the responses to um, that communication. Um, it, it, I must admit I was slightly disappointed by that communication. Um, and I think the same could be said to the response to the 2050 communication. You know, the 2050 and even for that matter 2030, the idea there um, was that there are a lot of um, reasons for policy uncertainty at this stage there are, because there are genuinely different futures that um, you can imagine. I mean, what will happen in the future of transport has everything to do with the um, situation, with the, the context for electricity. That 2050 roadmap was supposed to um, launch a, a debate in which member states would uh, come up with their own roadmaps and we would follow it through into the different policy areas. So personally I was rather disappointed that we got into um, this idea that renewables and energy efficiency are no regrets options. Yes, there was more that you, there is more that you can take out um, of a long-term discussion like that. In particular, we could have looked more closely at the um, market implications and even just the infrastructure implications um, of the sort of scenarios that we were talking about. Now, CAMA has done some work on infrastructure, but the PRIMES-based work on um, infrastructure, well, it wasn't, PRIMES was focusing on um, energy mix, and the infrastructure assumptions in there um, were, uh, were really rather simplified, a different model for the high renewables option, 
than um, the ones for the lower renewables options. But I think that there is um, more to be gained from this long-term work using that old uh, roadmap or the work that has been uh, pursued since then. And similarly, more to be gained from the 2030 uh, discussion than just um, fights about whether we should have uh, this, these three targets or two or one or something else. Um, so I look forward to that. But in any case, renewables are there fundamentally. Let me uh, come to then my question. All of these different debates, definitely renewables trade the potential for it is almost a, a structuring determining factor in the debates. Is it enough? Is it enough? Um, is there anything else, if you like, that could be done? Is there any big area um, which is, or, you know, a big area which would um, potentially you know, give a, a big boost? Um, if there were a bigger boost towards really a quite um, ambitious use of renewables in electricity, where would that be most likely to be effective? Are we looking at something political? Yes, in, in the transition we have to have a sense of um, political sticking to the ambition, but does it have to go into the nitty gritty? Um, or is all the stakeholder involvement in those different processes enough? There's far, just even listening to you before in this uh, discussion, there's far more expertise um, in this room than in my head, and you're all involved in different ways. Um, should we focus again on infrastructure or markets? Can we get that, what can we get out of the, if you like, the big picture stuff from 2030, 2050? Um, and is there more uh, traction in a regional, um, uh, you know, ambition than directly an EU ambition? So, those are my questions. <laughs>